this is Lani and Danny with our review of the best media of the decade. We love movies, games, TV shows, and music. We saw everybody's making 2019 lists and we thought, hey, what a great challenge would be to see what are our favorites of the last 10 years. Shall we start with movies? Yeah. Uh... Number 10, Coco. Pixar had a fantastic decade. It was actually hard to narrow down what our favorite Pixar movies are, and there's a couple on this list. Coco, I love because of the music. The soundtrack's fantastic. Actually, look it up. There's like 45 tracks in there. There's like the Spanish version, the English version, and the importance of music is the theme of the whole movie, so. Number nine, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. It's maybe my favorite one. The scene of them in the building is very iconic to me and stands out. Oh yeah, the Dubai building is incredible. Also the sandstorm scene, mm -hmm. it's mostly practical effects and of course Tom Cruise's ability to do his own stunts. They just keep pushing the envelope with their stunts. Number eight, Deadpool. Deadpool is very influential in my opinion. It's like a mixture of a comedy and a horror movie and there's... There's even love. There's even a love story in there and of course action. And Deadpool too, also fantastic. Mm -hmm. Number seven, Birdman. The one-shot illusion of Birdman was really what kept me enthralled the entire time. It's so effective, it's immersive, it really puts you in a movie, huh? Mm -hmm. Also, of course, Michael Keaton and Emma Stone are just terrific in the film. Right. Number six, Mad Max Fury Road. Man, that franchise really evolved since the 70s and you can't even compare it to mm -hmm. the first film that they had. What an accomplishment for the director and the team. They created this very believable world, the costumes are amazing, the picture cards that they use, the chase scenes, the sandstorm the, scene. The sandstorm What is it about scene? sandstorm scenes? Sandstorms are terrifying. You get a little bit and, of sand in your eye. Ever had that? It and sucks. visually epic. For some yes. Reason. Number five, The Artist. The Artist came out in 2011. It was a very beautiful, iconic film that year. It's a silent film, black and white. It's maybe the most cinematic, classic movie on our list. And oh my god, the dog. Remember the dog? That dog should have won an Oscar. Yeah. Number four, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It's definitely hard to narrow down what our favorite Marvel movie is. They're all pretty great. I mean, off the top of my head, Doctor Strange, Endgame, uh, and Guardians 1 are fantastic. So why Guardians 2, Lani? Well, they really set the plot up in number one, but number two, they really got to experience what these characters are like. You have more of a relationship with them. The soundtrack is amazing. Oh yeah, the soundtrack. Uh, the scene where they come to the planet with his father and they have the George Harrison song. My sweet lord, that's an epic scene. It's very powerful. Number three, Joker. I love DC movies. I think uh, Joker is by far the best one. Joaquin's performance, of course, is phenomenal. The movie's ability to create this multi-dimensional character, this villain, we feel sympathy towards them is a very difficult dynamic to pull off, and the movie did it flawlessly. Number two, Toy Story 3. Oh, Toy yeah. Story 3. Toy Story 4 was of course fantastic as well, it's in our honorable mentions. But it's definitely a franchise that we've grown up with and they've never let us down. We look forward to seeing Toy Story 3 for years and it hit all the feels. I've been watching these since I was 10. I hope they never stop making them. I could use another 15 of those. Maybe not 15. 16. May maybe, maybe 16. Number 1, Inception. Definitely my favorite movie of the last 10 years. I keep coming back to it. It's just... Epic. It's a mind trip. Visually, psychologically. That's the first time that we've seen buildings collapse upon each other in that psychedelic spiral Crazy. effect that just blew our minds. Can't wait for his new movie, Tenant. Mm hmm. That may, may make our list next year. Here's some honorable mentions that did not make the list. Yeah, Spielberg had a couple great movies, The BFG and Ready Player One. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I think, is maybe Tarantino's best of the decade. Shape of Water from one of our favorite well, directors. Guillermo. Lots of other great films. Oh my god, there's been so mm -hmm. many. Moving on to TV shows. Number 10, His Dark Materials. This is a new show and, you know, only one season so far, but I feel like I've been waiting for it all my life. And ever since that crappy movie came out, Golden Compass, didn't really do it justice. It's all right. It's all right. Nicole Kidman is good. We are big fans of the original source material. Uh, Philip Pullman is an amazing author and the BBC really just nailed it with the adaptation. You can always trust the BBC to do a good adaptation of something. Uh, I hope the show does really well. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Number nine, Who is America? Oh man, I love that show. Sasha Barra Conan, we've been watching him for years. Conan? Sasha Barra, 
Sasha Barra. Sasha okay. Barra. Barra? Baron. We've been watching Sasha Barra Conan. <laughs> you do it. Sasha Baron Cohen, he's back full of force. That show needs to be watched by more people. Um, I feel like it is a, almost a brand new art form. I, don't, I can't compare it to anything. Well, and Sasha has always taken a lot of risks with his projects, what he chooses to do, who he chooses to pretend to be, and he became so many incredibly believable, unique people, and he just got himself into situations that you cannot believe as a viewer is reality. Number eight, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. We came across this show recently and I love it. It's always one of the first ones that I want to watch. The casting's amazing, the costumes, the visuals, the script. It's funny, it's got humor. It's almost like a theatrical style to it, huh? It's like watching a great play and the soundtrack is amazing. Introducing us to a lot of fantastic older artists that we would have never known about. Number seven, The Boys. Only a couple of superhero shows on this list, and I feel like The Boys definitely did it right. It's only one season so far, but every character is very fully rounded, very developed. Even the minor characters are memorable. It's filmed here in Toronto where we live, know a few people that work on it, and they love working on it, so that's another reason to support it. Season 2 is coming soon. Yeah. Number 6, Sense8. This amazing show was unfortunately cancelled after season two, but due to an amazing outpouring of love from their fans, the creators were able to come back and finish it. A very ambitious show. It was filmed all over the world. It had a really diverse cast of amazing people. The themes of love and friendship and power and the villains are scary and it's amazing. Everyone should watch it. You uh, definitely reconnect with yourselves, your friends, your loved ones after watching it. I missed that show. I could have used a couple more seasons. The concept of feeling each other's feelings, I don't think has really been explored mm -hmm. that way before. It's quite effective. Number five, Legion. Another superhero show that I just think is so unique. The director of Fargo, Noah Hawley, did a fantastic job. I think it's one of the most mind-bending, crazy shows I've ever seen. It sometimes, sometimes makes me rewind it and be like, what the hell just happened there? But in a good way. After every episode, we would have to sit down and have a discussion. I would rewatch the whole thing one day. Number four, Stranger Things. How can we not include Stranger Things on this list? Everyone loves it. It's got great music. It's a great cast of kids. They do an amazing job. All the seasons were very, very enjoyable. I think season three is actually my favorite. It's just so crazy ambitious. I can't wait for the new one. Number three, Big Mouth. <laughs> oh my god. Have you guys seen Big Mouth? It's uh, like the new South Park. Or something. It's a. I didn't think it would be that as good as it was. Uh, the voice work is fantastic. And look up the Shame Wizard song. It's uh, pretty great. And if that doesn't entice you to watch the show, I don't know what will. You have to be okay with really raunchy jokes. If you watch South Park, you'll like Big Mouth. Probably. Number two, Breaking Bad. This epic drama did start before the 2010s, but it ended in the decade, so we're going to include it in the list. Most of the good seasons were this decade, so I think that counts. Yes. At number one, our most favorite show of the decade is Black Mirror. Lani actually worked on uh, season four of Black Mirror on an episode called Archangel, directed mm -hmm. by Jodie Foster. It's a really good one. In fact, I don't think there is a bad episode. I love the fact that it's an anthology series. What's your favorite episode? I don't know the title. Where they rate each other. Yeah. As well as the one that is the spoof of uh, like Star Trek when they're on the spaceship. Also, Bandersnatch, having to select your own story threads and all that. What an innovative concept. Uh. And real quick, some honorable mentions. Uh, Doom Patrol Season 1 is fantastic. Another great superhero show. I think I feel like we need, to, we need to see more of it to really put it on a top 10 list. I'm kidding. I'd watch anything with Jim Carrey. It's amazing. Watch it. You will cry. You will laugh. South Park, every single time a new episode comes out, you gotta watch South Park. They're always fairly consistent. Always so getting, it's maybe yeah. our favorite show of all time. Now, Game of Thrones was supposed to be on this list. That was more of a, I know it's an influential show, I consider it very well made, but it didn't make the list because actually watching it was kind of a chore. I don't know, it was a little bit on the boring side, we made it to season six, it was good. Didn't make the list, Lonnie, not a, you're not a big fan I don't, of it. I, it's on the bottom of the wheel of things to watch. One day we'll finish it. One day. Uh. 
Moving on to video games, number 10, Spider-Man. It's a very immersive game. I don't have much to say about it, apart from they've got everything right, from the story to the incredible graphics. The swinging through the buildings is amazing. Yeah, it's uh, maybe one of the most fun games ever. Number nine, South Park, the fractured but whole. South Park put out two amazing games this decade, and we played both of them. We even bought the expansion packs, the downloadable content. I am not such a big fan of the turn-based fighting. I am. But I and just... I wasn't before, and now I am. But even that's funny. A lot of fart jokes, which is whatever. A lot of fart attacks. Number eight, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We just completed this game actually recently and I loved it. It's got really beautiful visuals. You're in this new cool like Peruvian Mayan town that you've never get to experience before. The puzzles are fantastic. There's that whole giant village area. I don't think I've ever explored such a huge detailed environment. Again, it's really overwhelming. The story could be a little better, but we'll forgive that because the gameplay is so much fun. Mm -hmm. This is true Tomb Raiding at its best. Number seven, Raymond Legends. I can't play this game, it's too hard. But it's I like to uh, watch it. It's uh, on the difficult side, but I've hard. played uh, platform games my whole life. I'm proud to say I've collected all 700 lums. I think that's... Lums? Lums. I'm gonna double check that I'm saying it correctly. The soundtrack to Raymond gets stuck in my head the minute that we turn it on. Look it up. Sea of Serendipity is a great track. Number six, Grand Theft Auto number five. It should have been number five on the list, maybe. <laughs> uh. um, well, what is there to say about GTA V? Everybody loves it. Um, I think the strongest part of GTA V is the storyline and the characters. Trevor, definitely one of the best characters to grace our screen. Great, great guy. Number five, God of War. I feel like God of War is taking another step forward in video gaming. Just the way they use actors in that game. The motion so, capture. Right? Yeah, closer to a movie than a game has ever been. It's definitely one of those games that when you're playing it, you just stop and you look at the scenery around you and you take in all the detail and it's amazing how far people have come developing and creating these games. Also, I feel like it was a little bit educational. We learned maybe a little bit about mythologies. Random monsters. Random it's not even Greek mythology. mythology. Yeah, it's like made oh, up. it's like Norse gods. Yeah, it's mixed. mixed. Number four, Inside. Inside is a follow-up to Limbo, so I feel like Limbo should be in this list too, but we'll keep it at honorable mentions. The ending to that game, I will never shake from my mind. It is very disturbing. Another fantastic platform game. Dark, scary, atmospheric. Gotta play it with all the lights out. Your heart will be pattering the entire time. Number three, Fibbage. Three. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is a party game that you play with your console and your phone. Jackbox Games, the creators, make a lot of fantastic games. It was hard to narrow down which one I think is the most accomplished. Fibbage. Fibbage 3 is really good. Uh, Quiplash is a fantastic game, mm -hmm. kind of like Cards of Against Humanity, but you get to make the prompts and be funny. It's now a tradition in our household yes. to play this with our friends. Highly, highly recommend all of the Jackbox party games. Number two, South Park, The Stick of Truth. We put this one at number two because this was the first one that came out. I think it's a little bit stronger than the second one. However, both are great. You already talked about uh, Fractured But Whole. I feel like uh, I just want to mention that what a great idea it is to be a parody of a game. They made a game that makes fun of other games. Yeah. Number one best game of the last 10 years, we strongly agree, is... The Last of Us. This game will take you on an amazing journey. Both of the main characters, you care so much about them. Your life is on the line along with theirs. This game nails storytelling, which I think is missing in games. The ending is powerful. Mm -hmm. Most movies don't have such a great twist or turn of events at the end. Mm -hmm. It's just... can't wait for the sequel. And it's not just another zombie game. Even though you have mutants and zombies, it just goes so far beyond that. I don't even like zombies. But uh, this one yeah. is one of my favorite games of all time. I really recommend... I do highly recommend the PS4 remastered version, though. We play a lot of games, and it's really hard to narrow down the list, but these are our honorable mentions. Pickle 2 is fun and very addictive. 
Unravel number two, where you play with your friends or your partners. It's got beautiful music, beautiful landscapes. You have to accomplish some true teamwork there. Got some good puzzles too. You do have to think a bit. It's not, uh, yeah, it's not just pull this wagon. Trials Fusion, also very addictive. Pikmin 3 is my personal favorite from the Wii U days. Uh, very good game. Limbo we mentioned, and Assassin's Creed had some good entries too, didn't make the list, but hey, Odyssey and Origins were both really fun. And finally we have top albums. We wanted to do top tracks, but it was very overwhelming. There's so, so many. Uh, we were getting into the hundreds, so we <laughs> might post that list later or something. And even albums were hard to narrow down. We got it down to 15 before we just couldn't delete any more. So here's our top 15 albums of the 2010s. Number 15. Fun Some Nights. The other day we were like, oh yeah, fun. What happened to them? They had a, this great, great album in 2012. Come back, fun, make more music. We love you, we miss you. Number 14, Nothing But Thieves, self-titled album. Nothing But Thieves came out of nowhere and just rocked our world. That album is still a soundtrack to my life. I met them one time in Ukraine. They were really nice. They seem really nice. Seem like cool guys. Number 13, Closure in Moscow, Pink Lemonade. If you're looking for a really cool, psychedelic experience, but really well produced album that's gonna take you on a journey, this is for you. Closure in Moscow. It's crazy music. It's very proggy. It kind of reminds me of Mars Volta. It's an Australian band that isn't very well known, um, but they really should be. Same. Number 12, Congos, Lunatic. It's very close to my heart. It's got that song, Traveling On, I love, about touring. Um, lots of great hit singles on that one. I also met Congos, and they're also really, really nice. They wouldn't be on the list if they weren't really nice and if they didn't make great music. If you wonder why you're on, not on the list, it's because you're a shit person. <laughs> <laughs> Number 11, Coldplay, Everyday Life. This actually just came out, what, about a month ago or so. They had a couple more albums released during this decade, but I feel like Everyday Life really hits home with 16 songs about life, about the world, using a lot of different languages and cultures in the music. Number 10, The Killers, Battleborn. Battleborn came out in 2012, but it's still something that I have on my phone that I play all the time. Every single song is powerful. It's got great production. It was a bit of a return to form for the killers. Not that they're not great all the time, but this album is something else. There's some songs that uh, make me tear up. Yeah. Number nine, Group Love, Spreading Rumors. Well, another great band, and every song is kind of like a personal anthem. Mm -hmm. And will always be in our music playlists. Number eight, Haley Reinhardt, Lo-Fi Soul. We discovered Haley Reinhardt recently and she just blew us away. Her powerful voice and her just whole demeanor, it really, really brings you in. She's one um, of the best singers in the world, simply put. Um, she's known for her covers, but this album of original music is very, very good. And it has our wedding song. It was supposed to be Aerosmith, I don't want to miss a thing, but we went for... Strange World by Haley Reinhardt. Our first dance. Check it out, it's such a good song. Number seven, The War on Drugs, A Deeper Understanding. I'm so glad this album is getting the recognition it deserves. I believe it won the Grammy for Best Rock Album, I think, that year it came out. Mm -hmm. It's a guitar-driven album. Check it out for the tones, for the lyrics, for the amazing, amazing songs that are on it. If I had to compare it to something, I would say Bob Dylan meets Tom Petty meets something else. Number six, Portugal the Man, In the Mountain, In the Cloud. This album came out around the time that Danny and I actually met and Danny had recently released a, a cover of So American with his old band Everyone's Talking and I loved the cover of it so much and uh, then I checked out the album and I fell in love with the entire album. I think that's maybe one of the first concerts we have attended as well. It may have been. And it was hard to narrow down which Portugal the Man album to oh, put on this list because yeah. there, there were two more and they were both very worthy of a top 10 list. This is the one that really solidified us as being fans of their work. What's the last song that I remember? Like, still Sleeping or Sleeping something? Sleep Forever. And I think is the best song. Number five, Vampire Weekend, Father of the Bride. There's several songs on that album that have 
moved me to tears. It's beautifully written, beautifully performed, it's got lots of soul to it. I hope this album wins some Grammys. It is nominated for the Grammys next year. This Life is maybe my favorite song. I feel like this is a song that you could listen to every morning just to make your day better. Number four, John Bellion, The Human Condition. An amazing singer-songwriter album. Do you have a favorite song off of that? Um, it's hard to choose a favorite. I really love fashion. I really love Whoop the Fuck Up. 80s films is a good one. Very solid 14 tracks. Number three, Muse, the second law. Muse is my favorite band, and they had, I think, three albums. Mm -hmm. Lonnie's got me to think about it a little bit and decide I think second law is the most powerful of the three, although they're all great. Yes, it's got a lot of songs that have themes about being human and living in this earth that we think is just so important. Check out the song Explorers. We were just listening to it in Costa Rica, and that nearly broke me when we were leaving. Number two, 21 Pilots, Blurry Face. Blurry Face was almost our number one choice of the decade. I feel like that album is very important. It's very much a definitive sound of the 2010s. A little bit of hip-hop, a little bit of rock, and just fantastic songwriting, of course. And they, you know, come from humble beginnings, and they're just staying true to themselves, and all the music that they've released so far has been really powerful. The newer album, Trench, also amazing. And finally, number one best album of the decade, we believe, is... Daft Punk, Random Access Memories. They don't wow. make them like that anymore. No. It, uh, the budget alone, I think, was like a million or more. Music industry no longer allows for such budgets to happen, but um, it's of course not about the money, but I feel like every dollar has gone to good use. The idea of making an electronic album and then redoing everything with amazing musicians live is fantastic. There's always long gaps of time between Daft Punk's release of their albums, but that's totally fine, because if they all sound like this and are crafted with such care, take your time, Daft Punk, come back with another amazing album. It's been a while, though. I do hope they make another. They bet. Would be hard to top this one. Mm -hmm. It's definitely good for repeat listens. And our list of honorable mentions is huge, and there's way too many to mention because there's so much great music. Quickly though, Mother Mother, The Sticks. We love Mother Mother, we've seen them in concert, they put on a great show. They're Canadian. Yeah, represent. They're Canadian. Album rocked our world. MED3 had an amazing double album. You really like LP's album. Oh my god, what a voice. LP, that woman. yeah. Regina Spector is also maybe one of my favorite, favorite female singers. Her album, What We Saw from the Cheap Seats, 2012 album, is fantastic. It's one of her best. But we better end it here because there's way too many to mention. We would love to hear about your choices. If you have something to recommend to us, leave a comment. Books, singles, comics, a few things we didn't get to cover, but you know what, we love those things as well. Recommend anything that you think we should be reading, watching, playing, listening to. And we are also still working on new music and videos, so stay tuned. We'll see you in the new year with some new stuff. Alright, peace. Peace out.